Today we're knocking off one of my bucket lists. We're taking you to Brooks Falls, located in Katmai National Park in Alaska. Katmai is located in a remote area of southern Alaska. This is the place with the highest concentration of brown bear in the world. They are attracted by the salmon spawning in the Brooks River. The salmon run every year from July to September, and we're here the first week of September. We flew from King Salmon, Alaska on a float plane to Brooks Lodge. Good morning, how are you? This was an experience all in itself because I was able to fly up front with the pilot. This must be me on the front row. The fall colors and the scenery below was just jaw-dropping. You land on Knack Neck Lake and come ashore only after the bears clear the shoreline. This means we had to wait for three different bears to get off the beach. Ha! Leaving the cockpit. That was amazing. Yeah, it's pretty neat. There are so many pairs there that you have to transfer out of the plane and go directly to the ranger station where you are required to go to bear school. This means you watch a video on the do's and don'ts of how to be safe in this bear concentrated area. Watch. Welcome to Brooks Camp in Katmai National Park and Preserve. After you get the bejesus scared out of you, you get your luggage and roll your cart from the lodge to your tent location. This is our camping spot for the next three nights. And I'm so excited, we gotta put up our tent. The rooms in the lodge here cost $850 a night, at least in 2022. So yes, we're definitely staying in a tent site costing $12 a night. But hey, we didn't come here to sit around the campsite. We wanted to go see the bears. It's only a half a mile hike to the lower bridge. You pass the lodge along the way and you get up onto a elevated platform that has gates that keep the bears off the walking bridges. Here are the kind of shots you could get from the lower bridge. On the lower bridge tended to be the less dominant bears and the mama bears with cubs. You could see bears snorkeling. There are some parts of the bridge where you're not allowed to stop and shoot, but even in the places where you're allowed to stop, you can get some really fantastic views up close of the bears.
The rock stars of the lower bridge were the mama bears with their cubs, especially this one li labeled as 94 with her four cubs. Having three cubs are rare, but four cubs is really unusual. This guaranteed paparazzi ar around her all the time when she was in within view of the lower bridge. I mean, how could you blame them though? I mean, look at how cute these things are. Oh my goodness. We noticed that the mama bears tended to stay nearer the lower bridge where there were more people around. It seems that the larger male bears seem to dislike being near people. So I guess the mama bears found relative safety for their cubs away from the larger, more dangerous adult male bears. Around these cubs you can see the natal collar, this white ring around their neck that marks them as a younger cub. Yes, this mama and her cubs were popular even when they were trying to sleep. Can you imagine what a handful these four baby cubs were? The sub-adults have to be wary of the larger male bears as well. At the lower bridge is also where the sub-adults tend to hang out, and they practice their fighting skills as they play with each other. They were a lot of fun to watch too. The lower bridge makes an excellent platform for photography. It's gated, so photographers are completely safe here. From the lower bridge to get to Brooks Falls, you have to walk about a mile further, watching out for bears all along the way. Uh, and bear poop. Oof. Did you see the size of that thing? It was a pretty hike all to itself. I love the open field areas that we passed. You leave the the road and head onto a narrower trail to Brooks Falls here. The fall color is gorgeous this time of year. Hold on to your pants because any minute a bear could come out of the woods, walk toward us on the trail, or come walking up behind us unnoticed. Well, they, they, they never did, but it does happen to some people, actually a lot of people. We just made sure we made a lot of noise on the trail so we wouldn't surprise anybody. As you get close to the falls, you ascend to a gated, raised walkway. From here, you can choose to go to the lower Riffle Falls platform or the Brooks Falls platform. Brooks Falls has two levels of photography viewing platforms to stagger the photographers. In September, the platform was occasionally full of photographers, but we never actually had to leave the platform to make room for others we always had a space we could squeeze in. I understand in July that sometimes they have up to a two hour wait just to get an hour turn up on the platform. We had no problems like that in September. Here's a very zoomed in view from the lower Riffles platform.
Yeah, do you see it? You can see the vibrant red salmon swimming in the river waiting for the right moment and the right temperature to lay their eggs. And all around there were seagulls who were waiting for leftovers from the fishing bears. What I liked most about this time of year was it seemed that the less experienced bears or the least dominant were actually getting a chance to be up on the lip of the falls. In July, the fish jump like popcorn at the six foot high falls. You can have up to 25 bears at the fall at a time. By the time we were there in September, there were as many as eight bears at the fall, but as few as two. The more dominant bears knew that this was not a very productive fishing location, so they weren't fighting for this spot anymore. So we gave a chance for the ones that were not very good at it to try their hand at fishing from the lip of the falls. Next, you start to learn some of the names of the bears and their numbers that are assigned to them, and you notice what happens when a dominant bear comes in. This is 747. He is the winner of the Fat Bear Contest from 2022. He is arriving on the scene. I don't know about you, but I don't want to mess with him. Usually the altercations are simply fussing and growling. These bears know who can and can't be messed with and who's the bigger bear. I love this shot. This is Walker. This is 2021 Fat Bear Contest runner-up. He's approaching to 856, one of the most dominant bears at Brooks Lodge. 856 has the office and Walker wants to be close by. They fuss, but then begrudgingly make room for each other. I'm telling you, I wouldn't start a fight with either of these bears. They're both estimated to be around 1,400 pounds. Whoa! It was so interesting to watch the bears reshuffle around a location as a more dominant bear came in. One bear would leave or find a less preferred spot just to make room for the new, more dominant bear. With fewer bears up on the lip of the falls, it seemed like it was easier to isolate out a single bear and make a better shot. And certainly there were not as many jumping fish in September. A fish jumped about every five minutes or so, and only about every 15 minutes did a fish jump in a way that a bear standing on the fall's lip could actually catch it. You quickly realize that taking photos of bears catching fish takes patience. The bear has to be incredibly focused and patient to be successful. But then you realize that you had to be incredibly focused and patient as well. One good catch every 30 minutes meant that you had to be focusing on the right bear at the right time and ready to take the shot. You look away or distracted, you could miss the shot. With a choice of up to eight bears fishing at the falls at one time, this could be really tricky like whack-a-mole. 
I'm telling you, the suspense could be so intense as you watch. But let me tell you, what you came here for is that iconic shot. Filming a bear actually catching a fish, like in the process of opening the mouth and the fish going in. I did a lot of videoing for five minutes at a time and then deleting five minutes because nothing happened. This happened over and over and over. I got it! I got it! I got it! The easiest good photography was to catch a bear eating a fish. This happened about every five minutes. So here is a bear eating a fish in the jacuzzi. Here is the bear on the nearby rock. Here is success from the lip of the falls. Note how the bears hold the fish by the head and strip the fatty skin off. The fat is the bear's first preference, and then they eat the meat. Success again in the jacuzzi. Success again on the lip. Success in the office. Success on the lip again. And success eating on the rock nearby. Of course, all these bears eating fish put together make it look like this was easy. It really wasn't. This is over several days of us shooting. And here we have a bear eating a fish in the office with an argument nearby. And with those catches in the bag, there was only one more shot I wanted. Here is my personal favorite bear, Meet Otis. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we think that the lighter colored bear far in the distance is Otis. Not the one standing up, but the one further back. He's been bumped out from the falls and the pickings are a little easier down here. So we think that is Otis. The patch on his, there is definitely Otis. Look at him. Yeah, he's the one at the bush. He's got the light patch on his shoulder. There is Otis. I have to wait. Yeah. He's got a light patch on his right shoulder. It looks like he's trying to He's eating something. Take his during the day. With his little floppy right ear. Hi Otis. I love you. Otis used to be one of the dominant bears, but now he's getting older and starting to miss some important teeth to help him eat better. Otis is known for his ability to wait almost statue still in zen-like concentration, waiting for the perfect fish just to come right into his paws. He is super quick and super selective. You have to be pretty dominant to get to hang out at the falls, so we only saw Otis at the falls twice 
and only one time in his preferred location. When he was actually in the office, I filmed him for one and a half hours to get this shot. With that last video off of my bucket list and our three days at Brooks Camp up, it was time for us to head home. We had to be escorted to the plane because there were bears on the beach again. The mama with the four cubs came to see us off. Oh, she loves us. I am sad to say about three days after we left Brooks Camp, this mama lost one of her cubs to an adult male attack. I'm glad it didn't happen when we were there. Yeah, can you see this pilot of this plane tucked up against this plane waiting for these bears to pass? I mean, what are we saying? I, we had to wait too. The flight out was amazing, even if we weren't in the front seat of the plane. This was an incredible bucket list, once in a lifetime, unbelievable, life-changing experience. I hope you enjoyed it too.